What's up YouTube, it's the Casual Air Gunner, and today I'm going to address a question I got, which was the performance of pellets versus BBs in the Daisy A80. I never did show the performance of BBs in the Daisy A80, whether it was on the chronograph or the gel, so today I'll be doing both. First let's look at velocity differences. I'll shoot each of these at 10 pumps through the chronograph. First of course will be the zinc plated steel BBs and these are said to weigh between 5.1 to 5.4 grains which is much lighter than most pellets in 177 caliber. For comparison I'll then shoot these Gamo PBA bullets which weigh 7.1 grains which is about the average for this caliber. Then I'll finally shoot the Daisy lead free wad cutters which weigh 5.25 grains which is almost exactly the same as the steel BBs. This is just to see if there's any difference in velocity between a BB and a pellet that weighs almost exactly the same. Because this is an airgun channel that emphasizes safety, yes I am shooting indoors, but my backstop is multiple layers of material that I know can stop the pellet. I replaced the high tech newspaper filled pellet stopper with an even higher tech sand filled pellet stopper, and behind that a layer of Kevlar from a ballistic vest meant to stop anything up to a 357 Magnum. Each shot will be fired at 10 pumps out of my Daisy A80. The first shot is going to be the steel BB. Next is the Gamo PBA bullet. Let's try again. Now the Daisy lead free wad cutters. Looks like if you take weights into account, the BBs are actually only moving about as fast as your average weight pellet, and they're moving a lot slower than a pellet that weighs exactly the same as a BB. I was actually expecting that since BBs don't seal tightly in the bore. There's tiny gaps between the edge of the BB and the barrel, which allows air to blow past and is essentially wasted energy. That's why if you look at what happens when I drop the BB into the barrel of my Crossman 1377, it just falls right down to the end. But if I try to do the same thing with a pellet, you'll find that it doesn't work. Even if I try to push it in, it's not easy. But that's looking at it from a muzzle velocity standpoint. Another question is how it would compare in terms of terminal ballistics, and that's what the gel will tell us. I've got three pellets here to compare the BBs to. First will be the Daisy lead free wad cutters, which are typically used for target shooting and plinking and usually don't penetrate very well. The Gamo PBA bullets are domed in average weight and meant to simulate a pellet that would be commonly used in hunting. And then the Skankel Goldenrod pellets, which are pointed and heavy and meant to do one thing, which is penetrate. I'll shoot each one of these pellets into the ballistics gel at 10 pumps from 15 feet away and see what kind of results I get. Okay, got the block set up. The first shot is going to be the Steel B. Next shot will be with the Daisy lead free wad cutters. Now the Gamo PBA bullet. And finally the Skankel Goldenrod.
As expected, the wad cutters made it the least far in, but that's because they weren't really meant to penetrate. The flat head just isn't good for that and ends up dumping most of its energy early on. The BB and the pellet actually ended up in the same place, but if you look more closely, the PBA bullet did some additional tissue damage both right where the pellet is and also about an inch after where it ended up. The BB, by contrast, seemed to just zip to that location and didn't cause much damage on its way there or even where it ended up. It just poked a tiny wound channel and ended up there and kind of just stayed there. This is similar to the Skankel Goldenrod, which just zipped straight through, not dumping much of its energy into the gel. It exited out at the bottom of the block over here, and you can see it basically just zipped through and poked a small wound channel along the way, which is what it's meant to do. That's what hard-pointed pellets were designed for. Poke tiny holes, but make it as far in as possible. So interestingly, BBs actually don't give you that much more velocity relative to their weight when you compare them to pellets. In fact, a pellet that weighs as much as a BB seems to travel quite a bit faster than the BB. This is to be expected since the BB doesn't form an airtight seal in the barrel. Not all of the energy from the burst of the air can be used to propel the BB. In fact, some of it actually blows right past it, and that's why you can't use BBs in brake barrel air guns. From a terminal ballistic standpoint, the BB seems to behave similarly to a pointed pellet, just with a bit less energy going in. Because it doesn't deform at all, it basically pokes a small hole and tries to zip through whatever it can get through. Also, because it doesn't deform, you have to make sure you don't have a hard backstop that will make them bounce back, because they will bounce back right at you with the same amount of force that you fired them out. So from a purely ballistic standpoint, pellets are better than BBs overall. But keep in mind that BBs are substantially cheaper, and if you can find them and clean them off before they rust, you can actually shoot a BB an unlimited number of times. A BB that's been fired looks exactly the same as a BB that hasn't been fired because nothing has changed about it. In fact, this here is the BB that I fired into the gel block. As you can see, it still looks exactly the same as it did before I fired it. So if you're simply shooting cans or other soft targets, these are great for saving money, but for applications where maximum ballistic performance is a must, I'd still say go with pellets. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it if you did. Check out my channel if air guns are your thing, and thank you for watching.